Chapter 3 of the JoJo Lands released a few days ago, and JoJo Shins 11 has finally kicked off. The crew is mid-heist, and Rohan has no idea he's getting robbed, but he does notice there are a few things happening around his house that are kind of strange. There is a whole lot of setup in this chapter, but I think we got some pretty big hints as to what part 9 is going to be about, and most importantly, just what exactly Jodeo's mechanism is. In chapter 1, he tells us all about it and what it does. On first read, it might seem a little dramatic and kind of silly, but it makes perfect sense given the context. When you hear the word mechanism, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? It's most likely some kind of machine. For me, it's a clock. All of these parts work together and position the hands in a way that tells us what time it is. For Jodeo, his mechanism is his routine and all of the things in his life that play a part in him becoming rich. He goes to school every day, but not to learn or make friends. He goes so that he can flip bricks for his principal. Working for her eventually leads to an opportunity where he, Dragona, Paco, and Usagi can steal a diamond worth six million dollars. And as we see in chapter three, they might have stumbled upon something that's worth a lot more than that. There are a few things from his talk about mechanisms in chapter one that are a lot more significant now that we have a little bit more information. When Jodeo swaps over from talking about this kid getting shit on at school to how he plans on becoming rich, the location changes from outside the school bus to the shore of an island. Yes, part 9 takes place in Hawaii, and Hawaii is made up of a whole bunch of islands, but I think we can assume this is the same one from the colored page at the beginning of the chapter, the one Jodeo and Dragona are headed to on their boat with the big erupting volcano in the middle of it. From the first panel in this section, his eyes are fixed on the top of the volcano, the apex of it that's obscured by a plume of lava and smoke. Jodeo says that mechanisms have shapes. They have a form, but he can't see his yet, and I think we've been given a reason to believe that his mechanism is shaped an awful lot like this specific volcano, or whatever's at the top where he's headed. Chapter 3 starts out in the middle of the diamond heist. On the outside of the villa, Rohan is in the pool swimming, and Jodeo is trying to act cool and sneaky at the same time, and somehow he is succeeding and failing at both. On the inside, Dragona is being super cautious while Paco and Usagi are just bumbling their way through the house stealing anything they can get their hands on. When they actually start looking for the diamond, what they find first is a whole bunch of rocks all over the place. These rocks turned out to be cooled a, -a lava. Side note, I'm not going to pretend like I knew there were different flows of lava before this, but apparently <laughs> it's one of the most common. It's known for its slower pace that carries pieces of broken lava called clinkers on its top. When it cools, it does so in a jagged, sometimes sharp formation like we see here. The other most common type is called pohoihoi, which has a much more smooth flow that cools in a rope-like pattern. Alright, sorry, geology class is over. When Jodeo looks through Rohan's tablet, he sees a lot of close-up pictures of volcanoes, with one of them flowing with lava. He also sees pictures of the cooled lava and a map. If you've seen any movie, ever, then you know if there's a map, it leads to something important. It's a map. It's a map. It's a map. It's a it's a map. If you're caught up on JoJo's, then you know there's a high possibility this volcano is a supernatural landform, like the Devil's Palm in Steel Ball Run and the Wall Eyes in JoJolian. Back in the room Dragona, Paco, and Usagi are in, there's a whole lab set up with the lava and flasks, which Usagi points out are for heating and cooling. It seems like Rohan is trying to extract something from the lava or even purify it like Paco suggests. Maybe in its purest form, the lava sometimes contains something really valuable or does something crazy like the fruit and its equivalent exchange in part 8. That would explain why there's only a small chunk of it in the safe with the diamond and a bunch of it is just all over the floor. Now, if you've read part 8, which you should have because we do not skip parts here, seeing these rocks should have given you wartime flashbacks. Immediately, I started thinking rock humans have to be involved somehow. And they might be. This random ass cat that's just strolling through the villa like it owns the place could be a rock creature. It could also just be a cat with a stand, but its ears look strange to me. I know strange ears don't really mean a whole lot though because Jolene's scamming ass lawyer from part 5 could probably take flight with his, and he is just a regular guy, so I could just be tripping. However, I do think it's pretty safe to assume this cat isn't working alone, and there's probably some unrevealed group trying to prevent anyone else from learning the secrets that this lava might contain. Kind of like Tamaki and Toru in Part 8. They could also just want that big ass diamond for themselves. If it is anything like Part 8, then Rohan was probably the original target in the first place, and everyone else unfortunately just got themselves involved in a really dangerous situation. You know what else is dangerous? Being anywhere near flowing lava, which is one of the first things that we see Jodeo doing. 
Back in the flash forward from chapter one, we see him jumping up the side of the volcano like he's Mario collecting coins, and he wouldn't be doing this for no reason. A volcano is probably the last place that you'd want to go if you just wanted to frolic outside. This brings me back to the point of this video in the first place. When he talks about mechanisms, he says his is something that makes money flow directly to him, and he also didn't know what form his mechanism takes. If this lava does carry a rare resource of some kind, then it would make perfect sense for the form of his mechanism to be this volcano. This is supposed to be the story of how he gets rich, and I'm guessing this lava is how he does it. There's a chance this part could last 10 years just like the last one, so it could also be way too early for any main plot points to be revealed. All this extra stuff could possibly be just Rohan collecting lava as a reference for his manga. We already saw in part 4 that he likes to investigate the paranormal, and even though this takes place in a different universe, he's pretty much the same guy. What do you think? Am I doing the most, or do you have an entirely different theory? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Peace.